Hi, Forge followers. John Carlo here with Forge Recruitment. Today, I'm joined by Amon Manas. Amon recently won our annual Forge Awards in the category of Outstanding Paralegal. Welcome, Amon, and com congratulations on the award. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I wanted to bring Amon on to tell us more about her career and be able to provide insight and guidance for those looking to build a career similar to hers in the legal profession. So let's jump in. You are currently the Director and Professional Development Chair for the BC Paralegal Association. And I in am. addition, you're the paralegal with Danu Daliwal Law Group. You do so much. Can you tell us a bit more about, about that? Yeah. So um, like I had mentioned, uh, you know, before to you, this is my 20th year in the legal support industry. Uh, I don't know where the time went. Um, I recently started with Danu Dali Wall Law Group. I started um, in March of this year. I had just come off of maternity leave. I wasn't looking um, to get back into the workforce full time. I had worked previously long time ago at the Department of Justice with one of the founders of the, at the firm. He had uh, messaged me on LinkedIn and had um, asked if I'd be interested in meeting him and his, and his partner who happens to be his wife. And I had gone and met with them and I had told them that I, you know, I was still on maternity leave. I didn't have much to offer at the time, but they said somebody you know, with your experience, we'll take whatever you can give us. <laughs> um, so that was uh, for the first couple of months, and and I've been now working full time with them. As for the BC Paralegal Association, that's a volunteer position uh, that you know I do whenever I get the time, um, and that's wonderful as well too. I'm tired, but <laughs> it's, I'm very fulfilled. I have to say, the paralegal profession is going into such a interesting direction right now and there's lots of stuff going on behind the scenes but it's uh it, it's all really exciting well it sounds very very busy um yes. actually one thing i'm gonna stray a little um because one of the things you mentioned was that the firm you're working at now you cross paths with the individual was it back, uh, 15 years ago 11 years ago you said oh no no we me and him probably worked at the department of justice together at the same time in about 2003 2004 and you guys just kept in contact throughout no uh no I, you know this is what the great thing about linkedin is right they'll make suggestions on people who you went to like you worked with who you went to university with it just so happened that i had also um done my degree at simon fraser university and rob uh, danu had, had had as well so you know like it pops up on linkedin like oh you may know this person they worked here they also went here um that's why i'm a big fan of linkedin in terms of like professional connections i, I and i think that's amazing because i think when we talk to a lot of new grads we try and tell them thinking long term about their yes. career it's the, the people you cross paths with early on you never know what's going to happen yes. 5 10 15 20 years down the road so it's it's a very small world right so yeah and that, i mean I, i'm like living proof of that right because even though we didn't work in the same office we were part of the doj at the same time he was at a at a different building i was in a different building but here here we are all these years later uh you know connecting on linkedin and then and now working for them well and and, and that's the thing too like a lot of people i think look at linkedin like uh like facebook for example and they say i only i'm only going to connect or interact with those people I actually know. But it's so much bigger than that. It's so much, it's about interacting with other professionals in the space because you're sharing similar goals, similar passions, you're working towards similar things and you never know how you can leverage that experience. So I wholeheartedly agree. I, I don't think that it's it's similar to Facebook. I think I think LinkedIn is is such a wonderful tool, especially for people who are like getting into our profession and, you know, any entry level profession. There's so many role models and mentors on there that you can even just see what they're up to and seeing how they're spending their time. Uh, I, I think it's a great, great app. Well, segueing to that, I guess, yeah. how did you first get into the legal field? So I was doing my undergrad at Lingara College and I had was in first year I just graduated high school and I just didn't want to be part of these like big lecture halls learning like all these you know subjects anymore I just wanted to get into law right away I knew what I wanted right from when I was five years old that I wanted to be in the, in the legal industry and the goal was always at that time to go to law school and it just kind of changed over time but um I wanted to get in right away so what I had decided was that I was going to go to BCC and do the legal assistant program. And so I did that and I went as a practicum student to the Department of Justice. And while I was on practicum, I had picked up their system, their software system really quickly, and they hired me on my third or fourth day of my practicum. Wow. So that's how I got in. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's that's amazing because I again we we see uh, there's so many challenges with people looking to start out their career and and we suggest I mean either convert the the, the practicum into a full time position or even yes. volunteering I guess yeah. now who are going through their practicum and they they want to nail it I guess what advice do you have for me like even though it was like back in 2002 I was just very proactive in like learning their software I was like okay how can I do this the most efficiently and get my tasks that my mentor was asking me to do like how can I learn as much as possible here and get it done and show what what, what I'm capable of a lot of law firms they have their own software and all that I think it's so important to become friendly with it and and that's exactly what I did I mean back then you can only access it at the office now on practicum you know you if you even if you're at home, you can go on to apps on your phone and do all that. I think that was one of the biggest things, just learning it. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because even now with the pandemic, a lot of firms are moving remote or offer a yes. hybrid remote. One of the big things, it's how quickly can someone learn the new software, the new technology, right? And you're saying when you were starting out, like that was the first thing, like get really yep. good at, at the law firm software. And I think yeah. that that's really important and taking the initiative to do that. You also mentioned a mentor at, during your practicum. So how do you approach developing, I guess, that relationship for something that can kind of help you long term? Well, the the funny thing is, is that it's a very mentor who actually introduced me to the BC Paralegal Association that now, again, 20 years later, these connections that I made when I was only 21 years old, um, she's the one who actually introduced me to that role, right? So uh, it, it's funny how life works, but you do these things and you do them honestly and you do them, you know, with the intent that you want to be proactive and you not just to like earn a paycheck, but you're genuinely interested and you want to learn. I, I think those are attributes that can only help you later on in life and that people remember you for those things. I agree. Yeah, you, you definitely you take that initiative, you show that ambition, you're, you're going to stand out. So I, I wholeheartedly agree. For people who don't have a mentor now, what's yeah. your suggestion? How do they find a mentor? With the BC Paralegal Association, we do have a, like a student membership that you can enroll into, you know, into the association. There's mentors there. The courthouse itself has a lot of resources where you can connect in different like web based groups uh, where you can ask questions that you are looking answers for in terms of like actually going out and finding mentors now that the pandemic is, you know, it is what it is and people are meeting more in person when there are events where there's legal assistance and paralegals being invited to go there, talk to people, make your connections. You just never know who might be looking for somebody uh, for a position. And then a lot of my mentorship actually just came from working with some of the older generations who were who had been at the Department of Justice for a long time and were just teaching me the best way that they did things. Yeah, I agree. I think sometimes people rely too heavily on the job boards, maybe, and not enough getting that face to face or getting out and, and talking to people. I think there's so much value there. Going back to to kind of your career, can you walk us through how you navigated your your progression and, and ascended to your, your current role? And when I had gotten the job in the civil section of the Department of Justice, you know, I was happy to be in. I, I got that in and I, I was doing like reports for their software and all that. But I knew ultimately, like, what I'd wanted was to get as much experience as I could and then and then go off to law school. What happened was, as soon as there had been openings for legal assistance in any of the other areas of practice in the Department of Justice, I would submit my resume. I actually would, like, learn and then jump to a new, new section and learn their position. And I almost just made myself to the point where like I was this, this well of knowledge and just resources because I wasn't like stagnant. I wasn't static in this one spot. I, I can go to the criminal section. I could go to immigration. I could go to all these places and essentially float that if you if you needed me, I already had enough experience. I'd always be putting my hands up first and volunteering. That's basically what had happened. I went and joined as many sections as I could in the Department of Justice whenever there was an opening. Knowledge is power, right? Learn it as is. much as you can. Oh, yeah. It's the biggest thing. I guess, was there a moment where you said, okay, it's time to change? Like, and I guess, can you walk us through what that feeling was and kind of what prompted yeah. you to do it? Well, I mean, I mean, essentially, when I first went there as a practicum student and I had been hired, I, you know, I had more of a software based role, right? Like I was working, I was doing some legal administrative duties, but I was um, doing a lot of their software reports and data entry and all that. I had a really strong passion for like prosecution, like criminal prosecution. And I knew that's what interested me. 
I feel like I did what I could in order to like to get into that section because I just I wanted to be a federal prosecutor myself. So um, a mix of like me learning as much as I could, but also like opportunities when they would present themselves that I would put my resume forward and say like, you know, I'm very interested in this area of law. I think I could do really well here. I know like a lot of bigger law firms, especially, but they offer like these different courses that like online courses that you can take. And so it, there was a lot of that too, like just learning as much as I can about that area, that respective area of law and like what kind of documents they produce. What do they do at the start of a file versus what does immigration do at a start of a file? Like those kind of things. And, and so as as you're learning, move, moving to new areas, learning new stuff, I guess were there some pivotal moments in your career that you would attribute to kind of helping you get to where you are today? What I really had wanted was to, you know, finish my undergrad and then and then go to law school. So, you know, fortunately with the Department of Justice, I was able to get into a job sharing position where then I was able to go to SFU and um, get my degree and work part time at the same time, which was like such an asset to me. And I, I and I did get my degree. And then once I got it, I realized perhaps maybe law school at this time wasn't for me. A lot, whereas a lot of the other legal assistants were doing their part-time paralegal uh, program at Capilano, I had chosen a little bit of a harder route and done, you, you know, Simon Fraser and gotten my bachelor's degree in criminology. I think one of the biggest challenges was afterwards kind of just realizing like, okay, like, what do I do now? Like, I'm still doing the same role. Did I just kind of waste this time here doing this? And so I really had to like sit with it and, and think about like, well, okay, well, what is it that you want to do? Like, you're a legal assistant. Do you want to go to law school? Do you want to go now to your paralegal program? Or do you want to just start learning more about what the paralegals were doing and maybe pivot that way? And that's kind of exactly what I did because I had the experience. So I started being more proactive in helping the lawyers drafting documents that essentially the paralegals were already doing. So, I mean, that was one of the first big challenges after being there for about, I think I was in my 13th year when I kind of realized that, okay, either you're going to law school or you're you're going to stay in this position because that's all they really had to offer. And that's when I had decided to move into private practice. So that's actually a, a really good challenge that, that you, you spoke about. And I find what's so interesting speaking with you is your solution to a lot of things is just putting your, stepping outside your comfort zone taking action, forcing yourself to learn something new, right? Also, just because you went to school for one thing, if you can't yes. get it, it doesn't mean that's it, right? It's what else can I do? Where can my career navigate to? When I moved to um, private practice in 2015, I mean, I had just uh, been working with the Federal Prosecution Service, uh, criminal law and, and prosecuting criminals was all that, you know, that I kind of really knew. But that wasn't true because I were, I went and started working with a prestigious family law firm. I was like, oh no, like I don't know anything about family law. But what I did know was how to look up court documents. I knew how to look up precedents. I knew how to like go to the library and 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 find what I need. I think we we have, have so much knowledge and so much tools, and sometimes it just we need to have the confidence to apply it to to where we want to go. I I agree. I and I and I think too. So your your move from going from criminal prosecution to family law, I guess, because a lot of times people come to us and they are looking to pivot in their, their areas that they work in. So first, I guess, what prompted that pivot for you? Uh, for me, I actually had um, moved out of the like the close to the core downtown area as well. So my commute was taking a lot longer, whereas when I was younger and living in my with my parents, the commute was only seven to eight minutes downtown. I, you know, I had grown up and I had moved, bought my own place and I was living out like in Surrey, which was about like a good hour away from the downtown core, an hour and a half on a bad day, even with public, um, like SkyTrain. So, you know, the three hours a day was starting to, was starting to wear me down. I, I just had felt like I'm doing the commute for a long time now. And not just that, I honestly just was no longer being challenged. That, that drive that I used to have when I was younger, wanting to learn as much as I could, I felt like I'd hit that ceiling. And um, I just, I wasn't very happy. I, I wanted, I wanted more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to do more. And, and so what, I guess, did you find it challenging to find like that family law role because like, a lot of times we, we see people they they do find it challenging going from one one area to the other how how what was your experience so i so this one i can actually take credit for because i had just been thinking about it and like realizing that i needed a change but i hadn't really done anything for it 
But um, the owner of this law firm in Surrey, once again, had reached out to me on LinkedIn and said, I think you'd be a great fit for our firm. I, whereas before, if I would gotten those messages, I would have been like, no, I'm I'm happy where I am. But I think because I already had the, the wheels turning, I was like, you know what, I'd be happy to come meet you. And I did. And he spoke with me and he actually like hired me on the spot. Awesome. Amazing. And so yeah. you have a lot of success on LinkedIn. I, are you posting things? Are you commenting on things? I guess, how do, what, what would you recommend to help other people stand out? Yeah, I mean, definitely in 2015, I wasn't. I had just joined LinkedIn. Um, I, I really wasn't very active on it. I was thinking about, you know, wanting to do something different. So like, that's what I had joined to see what was kind of out there. I mean, I think the stars just aligned and he had reached out to me. So I can't really take too much credit for that. Now I am posting, I'm sharing more of the BC paralegal stuff. I'm sharing when the rules are changing in court. I'm changing interesting things happening in the legal profession altogether. Um, things that interest me, I, I like to share because you just never know who might also like that as well. And, and so you, you've already shared a lot of useful advice and tips and, and a lot of great value. But I guess, is there a specific advice you have for, for those new grads or people looking to get into the legal profession? Where do they start? How do they get it? What's, what's your one piece of advice that you'd leave with them? You know, picking up the firm software, I think is very important to try your best to like, you know, be as knowledgeable as you can be on that. For legal assistance, especially, I think it's so important to like, be careful about like how you present your work. Like if someone asks you to type a letter you're making sure that there aren't any errors i tell this to a lot of junior legal assistants now make sure that you get clients names correct it's such a small thing but it's actually not it's a big thing um to speak to them as they would like to be spoken to meaning like their pronouns or you know those kind of things i think sometimes we forget that this is almost like a customer service based profession that we're in we're there not to just help the clients through their most difficult time but we are there offering a service and perform in a in the most professional way that you can with them right um i think for me it's always always been wanting to just know how I can do my job the best way that I can. So like I said, like seeing how the courts are changing their rules, how we can do things electronically, the fastest way to do things. We're not only an asset to our lawyers, but we're just an asset to our clients as well. I think that you can work in er any area of law that you like, as long as you like it. If you like it, you're genuinely going to be interested in it. You're going to want to know how what the best practices are to to do your job. When you like something, it shows. It's reflected in your work. It's reflected in your attitude that you got. You got to do something you like. I, I agree. I I, it's, I know it's a uh, it's a cliche, but if you're passionate about about it, right, you're going to push yourself to get better at it, right. And that and I think that's the the most important thing. If you're if you're working in an area that you don't enjoy, then you're probably not going to push yourself to, to get better at it. And you're just going to kind of stay, stay stagnant. So yeah. I think that's a huge one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the most important, like just find something that you like and it's okay to say, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't want to do this. It's, you know, like that, that's okay. And just to follow your heart and be like, I, I'm going to find an area of law that I really enjoy. And I, and I think I would add on to that is if, if you know, you don't like it, then make the switch earlier because sometimes people will maybe do it for 10 years and then it becomes more challenging right if you know you didn't like it from the get-go make the move right then yeah. right so yeah I don't I don't I don't think I you know after 10 years you're gonna be like I don't like it you know I, I think <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've been in family now for what like se seven years and it's it's a very challenging area of yeah. law like you know it's a very chaotic area of law but I can't sit here and tell you still that oh I don't like it I you know I still really really enjoy it now if we were talking about like tax law I could have told you that in the first week that I'm not a fan of any of that yep. um but you know what I also I, I wanted to say that I think uh when in 2015 2016 when I was looking to to switch over um that was the first time that I actually had reached out to a recruitment company as well um and I think you guys play such an important role uh, especially in young assistants looking to find that perfect fit because you guys do so much of the legwork to make that match between the firms and, and the legal assistants, right? I've seen it happen in the firms that I've worked at where we've ha you know hired recruitment companies to help us. I've been on the other end as well too where I've reached out to a company and said, hey, I'm looking for a job. This is what I would like. Do you think, do you know of anybody? So to make those connections, you know, with you, you guys early on and, and then to keep you updated as your resume grows and all that, I think it's so important.
I, I agree. And I, I thank you for saying that. I think it should be looked at more as like a long term relationship. I, I know I've been working in the legal community in Toronto for 10 years and Vancouver for five years. I, it's very interesting on my end because I see people's careers evolve and, and, and it's it's phenomenal. So um, but it goes back to, yeah, I think, like maintaining relationships and understanding that legal is such a small community right so a lot of people tend to know each other and so you're going to cross paths in the future and just like how you secured your, your current role it's, you, you never know who you're going to cross paths with so it's so important to kind of stay connected yeah and like and at the same time you know people are constantly going hey do you know of anybody who might want to work here or do you know of anybody you know like you're right it is so small we we like to think that the world is big but when it comes especially to our legal community it everybody knows each other and everyone yep. knows who would be a good resource and who would be, you know, where to go when they're looking for some more assistance, right? Yep, I, I agree. Well, thank you so much, Aman. I really appreciate all You're your welcome. time. Um, and congratulations again on, on winning uh, the award. You're back-to-back -back you. outstanding paralegal winner. Thank you. you. Thank you thank so you. much. It's such a pleasure speaking to you. And you know what? If there is anyone that you know who is looking for, like, some more advice on, like, uh, you know, where to, how to fit in and all that. I'd be more than happy to, for you to share my email. Like I, I've been doing this for so long and I, you know, I really do want to help. So Thank okay, you, take care. Bye-bye. Have, have a good night. Bye. You too. Bye.